4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If your pet has an emergency, would you know what to do? It's scary, I know, but there are things you can learn to prepare. We're here in Stratford, Connecticut at the Stratford EMS for a very special pet safety program. And this is John. It's in conjunction with EARS, who you've met on our show before. Let's remind people EARS is. It's the Connecticut Emergency Animal Response Service. I knew that, John. <laughs> <laughs> and you have been quite busy, and you are busy, because your mission is to educate and to help animals in need in all types of situations. Yep. And basically bring that information out to the public, um, bring that information out to the EMS services, fire departments, anyone who might have a time where they're facing an animal incident that's having an emergency and basically needs to know what to do. It can be overwhelming. You think, oh my God, what am I going to do? Can I help my animal? But you actually can. Yeah, absolutely. And just like a person, you know, just like uh, we take the Red Cross, pe pe you know, person CPR classes and things like that. It's all to just memorize it, make sure that you know it. And when something does happen, God forbid you're there. Um, you know exactly what you need to do. And hopefully you won't panic. So before you were showing us CPR, I think. Yeah. It's a little different, of course, than a human. Right, it's it's a little bit different, but anybody who, who is familiar with CPR on a person, um, it kind of translates over pretty well. The biggest difference is that with dogs, you put them on their side. It's always their right side. And when you lay them on their side, the person doing the compressions is always gonna be behind them. And then just like a human CPR, you're gonna look for where to actually do the compressions no matter what size dog you're working with take the palm of your hand and you're going to look for basically the armpit of the front of okay. the dog you're going to take your second hand place it right on top of your first hand and that's actually going to be where you do the compressions okay um and just like a, a person you're going to be doing steady compressions just straight up and down just like that um and right in that area is exactly where you you're basically aim is with the compressions. And I noticed you went to uh, the dog's mouth as well. Right, you do the compressions, you try to do steady compressions and then you can take a break, cup your hands over the muzzle like this and you're gonna take a nice deep breath and do about two deep breaths just straight in. Okay. And it's okay if it goes into the mouth, it's okay if it goes into the nose because it's going straight down to the same spot. If your dog does have a cardiac issue where they've actually stopped breathing, um, this is something that it's really, you know, again, just getting into the flow, knowing exactly how to do it, it helps, it, it helps you, you know, do it when it's there, it's kind of ingrained in you. Um, it works very similarly to a person, so you don't have to try to remember something totally different. because right, it seems, you know, overwhelming. And that's why you have classes like this, which exactly. are so helpful, which anybody can go to. I mean, this is a free class, which is absolutely wonderful. You also talk about general first aid. So let's right. look at some of these. These are things, if you kind of think ahead, you'll be able to maybe help them right. hopefully. And right. this is an example of basically a first aid kit that's very sort of put together easily. Anybody can put it together. Um, it doesn't cost a lot of money to do. It's definitely a good idea to have one of these in their car or on their, their person, in their backpack. Um, so you can get something like this. This is actually a pencil case. Oh, all right. Um, so, but nice. it's nice because it gives you the clear so you can see right into it's it. You can exactly. see what you have. It has this nice zipper pouch. So everything's contained in there. Okay. And it's pretty water uh, tight. So yeah. that helps as well. That's nice. Um, and just some very basic things to carry with you, again, are very similar to what you might carry for a person. So in this case, we have some triple antibiotic ointment. Great. Doesn't have to be pet specific. The same antibiotic ointment that's used for people is fine for pets. Okay. We have vet wrap. Vet wrap you can actually get from most pet stores now. It can also be a bandage. It's pretty much the same concept there. We have some medical tape, which again is just really simple, uh, right. basically Johnson's and Johnson's medical tape. You okay. can get them from anywhere. Always a good idea to have some cotton swabs, yeah. some padding for just basically cuts and scrapes and things like that. This is a very easy thing to do, mm -hmm. just like a person. You just apply pressure to that area um, and you know it would really stop bleeding pretty quickly okay. um, if you have a larger dog um, I do. Yeah. <laughs> these ab pads these are, little, okay. um, are really great um, they're actually made for people not dogs but oh. they they're they work very well okay and the nice thing about this is if you have a larger dog or you have a dog that might have you know a bigger cut or something like that you can actually wrap this completely around. Wow. Um, and then all you need to do is take that piece of ace bandage or that medical tape and just do one wrap around. 
You don't have to worry about cleaning the area. You don't have to worry about it sticking to the paw to the paws or to the fur okay. because this type of material won't stick at all. Great. And I noticed you have a rope here. Yep. So this is basically um, it's a slip leash. It, you, we actually we've made these ourselves. Um, so if somebody wants, they can they can make them um, out of just a regular rope. This is sort of poly rope, so it won't cause any abrasions or okay. things like that. Slip leashes are wonderful to have. It can simply go right over. Um, a dog doesn't need to have a collar for it to work. I see. Um, things okay. like that. So and easy you know, to get on. Too. Yeah, very easy to get on. Very easy to get off. The other thing is, you know, you might be there helping somebody whose dog is not yours. The thing about a really nice slip leash like this, that's nice and soft is if need be, you can actually make a temporary muzzle um, and basically slip it right, oh, nice. right around like that. Um, and that way, if you're helping somebody or even having to move your dog, um, you know, you just have a little protection there for them. And lastly, not only that, but you know, sometimes, especially with big dogs, they might injure a leg or something like that. They're not exactly able to walk themselves okay. very well. So with something like this, if you needed to, put it right underneath oh, them okay. and it actually allows you to just have a be little bit of lift. support on the back end That's or on the front, you know, depending on where the, the injury might be. Um, and a lot of times, especially with dogs, they might have an injury on the back, but their front are working fine. Right. Just doing what we call the wheelbarrow, which is just getting their, their back end Can up, help. their front end works fine. Right. And they'll actually walk themselves just perfectly fine with really? just a little help from the back. Oh, that's great. If people want to get in touch with yep. you at Ears, how can they do that? They can go to our website anytime, which is earsct.org. And they can always come out to one of your wonderful events. Yep, and most of our first aid stuff is, is online as well. So things like uh, ideas of what to have in a first aid kit, so for example, are again. there too. Great, thank you so much, John. Thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. This has been Lawrence Creasy Pet Show.